to Vibrant Living with Nusha. I'm Nusha, a former climber of the corporate ladder turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I'll bring you an inspiring message to support you in designing and creating a vibrant, fulfilling life. Thank you for joining me today. Now let's get started. Welcome to Vibrant Living with Nusha. I'm Nusha, super excited to be here with you today to answer a question from one of our listeners, Deanna from Vancouver, Canada. And Deanna's question is, hello Nusha, I would like to know more about your point of stillness, that inner peaceful place that we can hold on to when times seem overwhelming. So Deanna, thank you for this question and how timely it is because August is eclipse season. August 2017 is eclipse season. And for those of you that are not familiar with eclipses, I will just give a brief overview. So many of us are familiar with new moons and full moons, and it's been proven that around the full moon, there's like a heightened level of activity everywhere. Full moons are a lot of completion, celebration. Now imagine an eclipse being 10 times more powerful than the new moon or the full moon and that's what they are. Uh, they also act as like a cosmic reboot. So imagine a computer that is on and it has all kinds of programs on and after a while it starts to slow down. It's not very effective, efficient and it kind of gets stuck. And so what we do to fix that is we basically just reset the computer, reboot. And so that's the work of the eclipse. They happen every six months and that is their intention is to create that kind of a reboot in our lives. So especially in August, this round of eclipses, it's going to be important to find that inner peaceful place within ourselves. And so love your question, Deanna. It's so timely to, to align with the eclipses. And by the way, the first eclipse happened Monday, August the 7th, and this was a lunar eclipse, which is a full moon lunar eclipse. And what's important to do is to sit down and, you know, celebrate and be grateful for all the beautiful things that are in your life as well. It's a great time to sit down and write a list of the things that you would like to let go of and allow the universal energies to do their thing. And then on August 21st is the solar eclipse, which is likened to a new moon. And this is a beautiful time to set intentions, start new projects. So uh, enjoy the experiences of these eclipses. And back to Deanna's question again, you can see why it's so timely of ways that we can access that inner peaceful place. And so there's many ways to do it and I'm very curious to hear from others who are listening to this conversation to join in the conversation and to share some of the things that you personally do. For me personally, I have two practices. One practice I call on the fly practice and the other one is a practice that I have at home. And so the on-the-fly practice is when I am anywhere. It could be stuck in traffic. Now, it's not like it's an overwhelming situation because I know Deanna's question is more about the overwhelming situations, but you know, it, it could be frustrating and especially when it's hot and you're stuck in traffic and you need to get somewhere. Um, or maybe you're waiting in line at the grocery store and it's it's a really long lineup and you can start to feel a little bit of frustration. And so in those instances, what I do is, it's so simple, <laughs> I basically notice how I'm feeling. And I think this is like 90% of it, is, is to notice the feeling. And that, oh my gosh, we're, I'm, I'm not in a state of peace and joy and etc. And so to notice that, and once I notice it, I basically just take a deep breath, like it and it's phenomenal I feel like the breath is like the keys to my kingdom of inner peace it's amazing so a simple deep breath and it reminds me of 
um, the the etch and sketch for those of you that may remember it's like eight and a half by eleven gadget that had two buttons on it and you could start to make some really fun creations with it and when you're done with creating you just shake it and then it clears out your screen and you can start a new creation so I feel like my breath is very similar in that as soon as I access it it's like a reset it's like the etch and sketch it just everything's just clear again and I can start with okay everything's fine and and continue on with my day so I do this very often in the course of a day and as I said the key is to recognize when to do it because I find sometimes when I do get into overwhelm I stop breathing like my not like literally stop breathing but my breathing becomes very short and I'm not accessing my breath to just relax into the moment and accept what's going on so that's my on the fly practice and my second practice is a daily practice that I have in the morning and in the evenings it's about 15 minutes and I sit I close my eyes and I connect to my breath on a deeper level and I also go a little bit further and connect to my five senses and I find that what that does in the moment is it gets me super present and then even deeper to that it gets me present to that inner still peaceful place that is within me and is always there and what I love about this practice is as I do it in the morning and in the evening as I go through my day I can quickly access that place because I know how it feels so when I do the on the fly practice of the breath I also have in um, the memory of my body the practice of the AM and PM practices of, of meditation that I do so it just right away brings me to that that still peaceful place inside so these are my two practices and friends over to you I would love for you as you're listening to this conversation to contribute now I know for some of you this may be new information and if so I hope that it has made a difference for you and for those of you that are practiced at connecting to that inner peaceful place, would love to hear what your practices are so that we can elevate health in our community together. And Deanna, thank you for this beautiful question that often goes unexamined, yet it is so important for us to live more vibrant, fulfilling, peace-filled lives. And Deanna, feel free to share your practice with us as well. And for those of you listening on iTunes and Google Play, you can visit our Facebook community, our Vibrant Living community on Facebook and start a conversation there or share there. And for those of you that see this video wherever you see it, feel free to share where you see this video. We'd love to hear and uh, learn what you do to bring yourself to that inner peaceful place in times of stress, frustration, overwhelm. So friends, as always, it's a pleasure to connect with you in this way and thank you for being a part of these conversations and until next time, be vibrant, be bright. It's your birthright. Now, let's go out there and shine our light. Thank you for investing this time with me on the Vibrant Living with Nusha podcast. I'm so glad that you joined our conversation. If you would take two minutes to positively impact someone's life by sharing this episode, that would be wonderful. Please leave us a review by visiting iTunes. Let us know what you enjoy and what you'd like to see more of. It will support us on our journey to causing a worldwide epidemic of vibrant living. Until next time, be vibrant, be bright. It's your birthright. Now, let's go out there and shine our light.